What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can align the rotation of any object with any other object in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Make sure that you stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you an extension that can automate this process and make everything a lot easier. Okay, and so this is specifically about rotations. And I do have another video about aligning objects from like a, you know, aligning a point of an object with the ground or with different points or things like that. I'll try to remember to uh, link to that in the notes down below. If I forget, just leave a comment and let me know. Um, but um, for aligning objects when it comes to rotational, factors this can get a little bit tricky especially when you're dealing with objects like this one that are rotated up in multiple different directions and so in a lot of ways the simplest way to handle this is the same way that we handle getting things to points in the 3d space which is the three rotation method um, for getting points in space it's the three movement method right you move something in the red direction then the green direction then the blue direction until you get the object where you want in the 3d space well in this case we're going to do the same thing but with rotations so in this case i'm going to move this to whatever point i want this to align with we'll say we want it to be on this line right here and notice how this is rotated off in multiple different directions and so the way that i go about this is i start by just picking one and it's usually the blue direction is the one that i like to start with and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tap the q key on my keyboard with this object selected in order to activate the rotate tool well, now, if I mouse out into space, remember that you can tap the left, right, or up arrow keys in order to lock the rotational direction of your object. Well, in this case, what I want to do is I want to single click, and I'm going to find the point on the back corner over here, like so. So we're going to use the orbit tool in order to do that. And I'm going to click, and I'm just going to rotate it until this object is aligned with the line that I want it to rotate with. Well, now we want to do the same thing on the green axis. So we're going to take the object, right? And in this case, we want this to stand straight up and down. So we're going to take this and we're going to rotate it until it's in the blue direction right here. So now we're good from that standpoint. Well, then we want to tap the right arrow key to lock this to the red direction. And we want to fix this in the red direction. And then if anything's wrong, right? So in this case, this isn't quite aligned. You can just tap the up arrow key lock it to the blue axis, and then finalize your rotation right here. So really, it's just making sure that you get the objects rotated in a way where they actually align. And so this is another one where we want to place this object in this opening right here. And so the way that this works is you got to think about the corner or the way that you place this as almost a point where this is going to hinge, right? You have to get a point in the right location first. So I'm going to tap the M key. We're going to single click on a corner and we're going to move our mouse and we're going to align this right here. And it really doesn't matter which direction you fixed first. So if you want to, you can take this object and you can start with the green direction. So we're just going to move our mouse here rotate this object in the green direction until it's straight up and down like so and so now i'm going to fix it in the blue direction so i'm just going to tap the q key i'm going to tap the up arrow key single click move our mouse this way like so until it aligns with this corner and then we're going to find this point right here we're just going to align this until it's straight up and down so tap the right arrow key single click find this corner and we'll rotate it over right here. Now, a lot of the time you're still gonna be slightly off, so we're just gonna come back in and then just do a little bit of rotation here in order to fix that. And now it fits great in this opening. Now, this can sometimes be a pain, especially with more complex objects. Um, so like, let's say for example, we wanted to take this object and we wanted to align it to this surface. Now, what we could do, and this is definitely valid, is we could go to view hidden geometry and then go find a point right here and then take this object and rotate it so that it aligns, right? So in this case, we would tap the up arrow key go find the back corner over here and i'm going to toggle x-ray mode on so i can see this and we can align this so it aligns with the surface and in this case we're going to mouse over this surface in order to get 
the rotational direction because this object isn't actually actually along any of these points, right? So what you can do is if you want to rotate along a direction that isn't on the axes, you can tap the Q key and you can mouse over a face. Well, notice how when I mouse over the face, now if I hold the shift key, I can lock my inference right here. Well, then we can just take the object and rotate it in this direction right here and move it along the face. So you can use that kind of like face inferencing if you decide that you want to do that. So you can just lock to a direction by holding the mouse over a face and then holding the shift key in order to lock that. And so that's definitely a valid option. And so another way to do this is if you want to create things that are going to be easy to place on faces um, and align to those faces, you can create what's known as a glue to component. So what a glue to component is, is it's an object that's going to try to take your model axes and align them in such a way that um, this always aligns with a face. So the way that that works is you can take the object, we're going to select it and right click, and we're going to do a make component right here. And notice how there's an option here for glue to, and there's an option for horizontal, vertical, sloped, or any. In this case, I'm going to pick any right here. Well, in this case, if we pick any, it's not actually going to work, right? So we're going to take this object and this is component number two in my model. Notice how it does kind of try to align with this object, but um, it's not doing a very good job. That's because the model axes are really important. So I'm just going to explode this and I'm going to purge the unused in my component section right here. Okay. And so one thing I find helpful when I'm doing this is standing the object up. So I'm just going to use the rotate tool with this midpoint right here. I'm going to stand this object up. And what we want to do is we want to create a component. So we're going to select this whole thing, right click and make a component. Well, in this case, I prefer to create the component axes before I pick the glue to, because what happens with the glue to is um, if you tell it to pick any before you do this, it's just going to create this kind of like flat surface in here. Well, the problem is it's really hard for me to set which direction this is going to face from a locking standpoint, right? I can't tell which one is up or down. So what I like to do instead is I want to right click on this. We're going to make it a component and I'm going to set my component axes before I pick glue to a surface. We're going to set these axes. And in this case, I want to find the midpoint of this object. And I'm going to set this up where the blue axis is facing down like so. And we're going to make sure to set this to a glue to any and click on create. Now, this object in here isn't actually going to glue, right? You need to bring in a new version of the object from your components section. So um, if you click into your component section and click on the in model, this component should show up. And I do find this somewhat frustrating because like the direction doesn't always work the way that you would expect it to, right? So in this case, if you have this for whatever reason facing the wrong way, we're just going to flip it like this. So it's facing up and I'm going to update my component axes. Well, now the definition of the component should have changed. This is now going to try to align to any face that I put it over. So if we toggle our hidden geometry on like so, notice how every time I bring one of these in, whatever face it's over, it's going to try to align to right here. So um, definitely can be helpful for those more complex faces like these. And notice how it works over really any face that you try to face over like this one. So, um, but it is kind of twitchy. You might have to play around with those axes direction um, in order to get this to work properly because sometimes like it does work with the blue facing down. Sometimes it works with the blue facing up and I can't really make rhyme or reason as to why. And then sometimes you have objects like this one that aren't very well aligned inside of their bounding boxes for whatever reasons. So this is because your model axes or your object axes um, are facing a different direction than your model geometry. And so you can come in here and you can try to like reset your axes manually. That can get a little bit tricky. Um, a lot of the time what I like to do instead is for an object like this one, I'll just jump into the object and I'll just use that same method we used before, right? So in this case, right, the only issue that we have with this object is it needs to be aligned at the blue axis. So I'll go ahead and I'll align this object so that it's actually at a right angle to the axes that are in here. Well, now that bounding box is going to align a lot better with the object and I can use it a lot better to align with the surface. Well, now, I'm just going to create a copy of this object and align it with this corner. And we're just going to do that same thing we've been doing, right? We're going to start 
by setting our rotation for the front and then we'll rotate in the green direction like so and then we'll rotate in the red direction like this. So now this is set up where we can use the array tool in the move tool. So we'll just use move tool in copy mode. We'll type in times five or times 15 or however many copies we're going to create. And then we could copy these over right here. But sometimes taking the object and aligning it with the object axes can make working with these a lot easier. And then kind of a bonus tip, there's also an extension that Fredo 6 has generated um, to help us do things like this. It's called Move Align Me. It's something you can find in the Sketchication plugin store. So if we go to Sketchication Extension Store, if you have that installed, if you don't, you need to go to sketchication.com and find it in the plugin store. But we want to look for Move Align Me all one word right here from Fredo 6. Um, I believe this one's a free extension right now. The way that this one works is it tries to help you automate this process. So the way Move Align Me works is I'm going to pop up the window right here. We're going to use this first option. And so what it does is it lets you pick an object, right? So you can start by selecting your object and then you want to pick a point. And then you want to pick that same point over here. But then it's going to ask you to pick an edge like this one. So we're going to single click in order to select the point at the end of this edge. And we're going to rotate it this way. And then it's going to ask you to do the same thing over here. So pick a point and then pick the alignment point right here. And now we're good. The object's aligned in the opening. So if you're having trouble with those kind of like manual alignments, you might try Move Align Me. Um, I will link to a video I did about this in more depth in the notes down below. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave, leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any tips about aligning object rotation and SketchUp. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.